Our hope is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go unto the altar of God. To God, give joy to my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God, and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now, let us make an examination of conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, I will offer the confidior. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my dear brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thus says the Lord, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine because you are precious in my eyes and glorious and because I love you. When I found your words, I devoured them. They became my joy and the happiness of my heart, because I bore your name, O Lord, God of hosts. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Heavenly Father, you have laid your hand on us and called us by name. Give us the grace to answer your call and proclaim to all the people the good news of Jesus Christ, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray, O merciful Father, as we gather here today, we remember and pray for the repose of the souls of our brother and sister in blessed memory, for, for Fred Boren and for Wanda Corver. Into your tender care, we ask for your grace and blessing. Accept them into your heavenly kingdom and bring us the consolation of always trusting in your care. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Today being the second Sunday in the ordinary time, we take the first reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again the Lord called Samuel who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said, you called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you my son, go back to sleep. At that time Samuel was not familiar with the Lord because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. This is the word of the Lord. The Graduate. You are my intimate friend, and also you have found favor with me. Then call me, and I will respond, or let me speak first and answer me. The second reading for today is taken from the first letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immortality, but for the Lord. And the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord, and he will also raise us in his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. 
Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the immoral, immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. To do your will, O oh my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, Cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. John. Jesus was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come, and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John, and you will be called Cephas, which is translated to Peter. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. Words taken from today's Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. 
In today's gospel, we read of Jesus calling his first disciples. From his birth, to his baptism, to his temptation in the wilderness, Mark writes in the first chapter of his gospel, verse 14 and 15, Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Jesus' ministry was to be found also in the story of Luke where Jesus being called upon at his local synagogue opened up the scroll to Isaiah and proclaiming that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me for he hath anointed me. We read that following his reading he rolled up the scroll and he addressed those in the synagogue and he said today this scripture is being fulfilled in your hearing. In Scripture, we read that John the Baptist did not know Jesus. Whether he met him or not, we read of an encounter of John with Jesus. John was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched, Jesus walked by, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God. John pointed to his disciples of the one who was to be baptized by him. John was born to a very special position, one that would bring forth the Messiah, the Lord in all simplicity and humility. After Jesus began his ministry, he needed help to proclaim the good news. And he called helpers, and we know them as disciples. Now, the word disciple is defined as one who embraces and assists in spreading the teachings of another, an active adherent as of a movement or a philosophy. The second definition is one of the original followers of Jesus. You know, since the beginning of creation, mankind has sought understanding of himself or herself in relationship to the world, their universe, and to their God. All five of the major religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, have followers or disciples, those who seek to have greater understanding or wisdom from their God. Not only to learn of wisdom, but most importantly, to eventually come to know him personally. And in this illumination, there have been different names. Samadhi to the Hindus, Nirvana to the Buddhists. In Christianity, it has been referred to as the cosmic marriage, the mystic, or Christ consciousness. In simple terms, when God comes into one's life, they are changed forever. For those who meet them on their path, they will never be the same. Today, there are approximately 2.2 billion followers of Jesus in the world, which makes Christianity the largest religion on our planet. Another interesting fact is that Jesus was a Jew who lived in Palestine. When he called his apostles, he sent them out to preach to the lost tribe of Israel. But we learn later on 
that it was not to be just the Jews, but rather to be also the Gentiles. After Jesus' ascension into heaven, we learn of another name of a follower, a disciple, Paul. Paul was to have a very special mission in ministry from God. He was to preach the good news of Jesus to the Gentiles in his life. It is believed that Paul established up to 20 churches during his life, and he traveled over 15,000 miles in under two years. In the New Testament, Paul is said to have written 14 letters to the different churches and to individuals. We hear of the names of some of the churches that he founded. Corinth, Galatia, Philippi, Ephesus, Thessalonia, and Rome. All these letters were to form the early belief of Christians, and it tells us of what is expected of us as being followers and disciples of Jesus Christ. Paul had a very special gift of writing, but he was not the only writer in the New Testament beside the Gospels of St. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There were other great letters of faith written by James, Jude, Peter, and John. And so, with all of this information that is given to us, and as we speak of discipleship unto the Lord, what do these 27 books of the New Testament tell us about discipleship? We could spend a lot more time sharing the word about all the things that make a true disciple of Jesus. But I'd like to share with you a few. I believe that to be a true disciple of Jesus is, first of all, to accept the call of Jesus to follow him. Did not Jesus speak in Luke when he said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Did not Peter and Andrew, John and James, Matthew and the others, when they were called, answer that call and left everything? Second of all, to be a true disciple of Jesus is to acknowledge Jesus as your personal Savior. Paul speaks in, in his letter to the Romans. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Third of all, to be a true disciple unto the Lord is to live a life devoted to Jesus. Jesus himself at the Last Supper spoke these words, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. Fourth of all, that to be a true disciple of the Lord Jesus is to seek the kingdom of God before anything else. Jesus himself speaks again. But seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be yours as well. You know, my brothers and sisters, to be a true disciple unto the Lord is to know the Lord 
and to know his teachings. For he was sent not only to teach the good news, but to have others share that good news. Jesus writes, or says in Matthew's Gospel, Take my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your soul. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, in following the, the way of Jesus, the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, and others would follow and be baptized into the faith, assured by the Lord that they would not be alone, but they would be led by the power of the Holy Spirit. They would be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, just as the Holy Spirit was with the Lord when he descended upon the Lord at his baptism. You know, when you study the Word of God, and you read about the life of Jesus, we begin to know and to understand the true cost of discipleship. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. If my people upon whom my name has been pronounced humble themselves and pray and seek my presence and turn from their evil ways I will hear them from heaven and pardon their sins and revive their land.
add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray, O Lord our God, accept these gifts and let them be tokens of our love and loyalty. Through them may our ministry be made holy in your sight. Through Christ our Lord we pray this day. Amen. Let us pray, Almighty Father, accept these gifts we offer you in faith and trust. May this offering unite all of us with your Son's offering on the cross, which brings about eternal life. We pray this day for Fred Boren and Wanda Korber, in whom they rest within you, dear Lord. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. For at this time, we celebrate the triune revelation. He re was revealed to the Magi from the East while yet a child, and he was worshipped. He was revealed to all people at his baptism in the River Jordan. And you, Father, and the Holy Spirit give witness to his divinity. He revealed himself to his apostles in Cana of Galilee making manifest the power of God through his miracles. And so therefore on this day we join with the voices of the angels and the archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he, who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord, Today in our prayers, let us remember the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the homeless, the hungry, and the unemployed. Let us remember and offer prayer for all those who are suffering from the coronavirus, as well as all their family members. Let us give thanks and pray for God's blessings to rest upon all doctors nurses, first responders, and health care workers. In our prayers, let us pray for all abused and neglected children in our world and the victims of violence. Let us remember all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad. And for all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, 
together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so great for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, and immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we, who receive the most sacred body and blood, of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants, Fred Bourne and Wanda Corber, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name, their hearts who are always open to justice and mercy, 
and with laws pattern after their divine master merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew, and all the saints, graciously grant peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give unto you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant it peace and unity according to your holy will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil, Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen.
What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation. And I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, now let us pray together the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. To you, O oh men, I call. My appeal is to the children of men. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of truth, give us the grace to open our hearts to your call, to hear it with joy, and to follow with love until the twilight of our lives when we will see you face to face through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, through this Holy Eucharist, we are united with our Lord Jesus, who rose from the dead. May our brother Fred Boren and our sister Wanda Corber whose anniversary of death we honor this day, be joined with you in the new Jerusalem. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also you. Go, the sacrifices offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. 
Grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. He came to his own, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters, I welcome you as we have offered the holy sacrifice of the Eucharist. It is my prayer that God would bless all of you with his divine presence. We also will offer prayers this day for not only our intentions but also the intention that God would bless the next President of the United States, Joseph R. Biden. He's going to need a lot of prayers. When we think about what happened back on January 6th, we pray for those who are heart of heart to seek the Lord and to everything that they do. As I said last week, we know God is a God of love and not of violence. It is only in man that there is violence. But if they answer the call to follow the Lord in humbleness of spirit, he will surely bless not only those who follow the Lord, but he will bless our nation. And so, as we offer prayers, let us pray for peace. Let us pray for one another, for our loved ones. And also we will pray today for the repose of the souls of Fred Boren and Wanda Korber and all those who rest in Christ. May God be with all of you until we meet again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of Fred Boren and Wanda Corber and all our faithful departed. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.